Some people like to file from the back towards the front. I like to file this direction so that I'm filing with the, the file pointed towards the back. Reason for doing that, as, a, as I push the file through, it creates a burr on the tooth. When I'm pushing this way, this tooth, because it's bent towards me, the burr that I'm putting on it goes towards the inside where it doesn't cut. The outside remains sharp, so this sharp point stays sharp and doesn't have a little whisker of metal rolled around it. I can feel a burr on the back side. Then I go this tooth, skip a tooth, next tooth. Why am I skipping a tooth? Because this one's pointed the other direction. One, two. Now, I always start at the back side. Why do I start at the back side? Very seldom cut here. What little bit you do cut is only the last little bit because only it can only go into the log that far. So while you're getting your rhythm going and you're getting the practice going so that you can get the file to run right, it's better off to make your mistakes on the back edge of the blade. Now you'll notice, I don't know if you can see it, I have the saw vise tilted. The thought behind the tilted saw vise is I can lay the, the file flatter and cut a deeper gullet without having to try and hold the saw or hold the file at a special angle. I can pretty much just run it across flat. Just makes it a little easier for me to do a good job of sharpening. Skip a tooth. One, two. Skip a tooth. One, two. Skip a tooth. One, two. I'm going to have to go over this saw blade twice. The center section's pretty well worn. If you lose your place, stop and look at the teeth. By the time you get good enough to be doing this for a living, sharpening it saws for other people, you won't have to stop and look. But we're talking about most of us only sharpen maybe 10 or 15 saws in a life. So there's no point in making a big rush out of it, trying to do everything quickly. Take your time, look at what you're doing.
Now this is a repeat, but we're just going on the other side. I should answer this question before it's asked. What size file is this? Well, I honestly don't know. Doesn't have a name on it. The teeth are about a quarter inch overall. And this file is about seven and sixteenths, real close to a half inch. The edges of the file have teeth on them and they're rounded. So I don't end up with a sharp gullet in the bottom. The reason I'm using a wide file on this, as I go down through, I'm going to dull this much of the blade of the file. I'm going to dull this much of the file. So when I get to the next tooth, if I wanted to, I could rotate it and cut again. But this side, instead of using the dull side, is going to come over to the top part and be sharp again. You get more cuts. If you have a file that's just the width of the tooth, say I use this little one, it's going to cut all of the back, but it's not going to get all the front. And even if it did, if, if it was large enough, the whole file would wear out these two faces so I couldn't turn it because no matter what I did, I'd have a dull face. So that's the size file that I'm using, and that's why I'm using that size. Now if I look at the tips of the teeth, I can see that some of them are, are pointed and some of them still have a shiny spot on top. That tells me I have to go one more pass, both sides. It's okay. I don't want to go at it and try and do it faster by taking four cuts each time, four passes with a, or four strokes with a file, because all that's going to do is give me four chances to make a mistake. I can go too deep. If I go two, when I go across it the next time, I can say, oh, that's a, that's a little much and hit it a little lighter. If I go four and I go, oh, that's too much, I've gone way too far. Then I end up rejoining the whole saw and doing it all over again. Okay, that's the first pass. Second pass is the same thing exactly. The only thing I do different, when I was sharpening this side, I had rusty teeth. So I could tell because the ones that I had filed were shiny and the other ones were dull. So now I have to use something that's going to make the tip of the tooth dull. So I just take a magic marker 
and mark it. Some guys use a candle to smoke the teeth. I haven't tried that. There, all the teeth are marked. Because we still had some shiny tips left on the teeth, we're gonna make another pass down the full length of the saw blade. Just two strokes per tooth. Waxing the blade necessary. Nope. Don't need to. If you want to keep going back and taking the rust off all the time, be my guest. Myself, I kind of like having the rust off of it and then stay off of it. Now we're going to put the saw back together again. This being the end away from you because it's the short handle. It gets the teeth pointing towards it. This uh, saw was put together with an old nail. Now is that authentic? Probably not. I would imagine it had a special little pin that went in there. Easiest if I look through the hole and line up the hole in the blade. Put a drop of oil in that turnbuckle. It's a special kind of oil that I use. It's called used engine oil. And I get it by the gallon every time I change the oil in the truck. A gallon lasts me a long, long time. How tight do I need to draw that up? I don't have a number. That's about right. Somebody with better ears than I have probably could tell you what pitch that is. Let's go try cutting a piece of wood. <laughs> 